You want to start a research project but don't know how to come up with a research question? Hi, this is Dr. Jia here. Today, I will guide you on the simple steps on finding your research question. What is a research gap? A research gap is a problem where you, the researcher, can help solve. There are generally three types of problems. One, there is no solution. Two, there is a solution, but the evidence for the solution is conflicting. Three, the solution exists but it's not quite good enough. Now let's go into the steps. Step one, start from where you are. Don't start blindly. Don't go to Google Scholar or PubMed, reading articles hoping that an idea will pop up. Instead, leverage what you already know. Use your day-to-day -day experience. For example, think about the work context. Are you working in outpatient clinic? Or do you focus a lot more on medical education or administrative work? Think about your work location. Do you work in a hospital, surgical center, also think about work processes. Are you always involved with the discharge planning or are you involved in outpatient clinic follow-up? Step two, brainstorm ideas. At this stage, don't start reading yet. Let your ideas flow. When I say brainstorm, some of you might feel stuck at this point. So I'm gonna give you a few question prompts to help you get started. First prompt, pain point. Think about the pain point or the problem of your target population. Listen to their complaints. And when you do, ask deeper questions like what, when, how, who. Then the next prompt could be in the clinical pathway. What I mean is think about the incidence and prevalence of the condition you're interested in. Also think about the risk factors, the causes of the condition. What are the treatment? How do you screen the patient? How you diagnose the patient? You can even think about the outcomes and prognosis. Another prompt, workflow process. Is the workflow process too slow, too complex? Are there too many steps? You can create a mind map or just simply list them down. Step three, preliminary literature review. Now that you have a list of questions, I want you to start looking at the literature. Look for three to four review articles of the topic of your interest. Review articles are not primary research papers, but the authors have distilled and read through the literature to find the most important research papers in their field. The benefit of starting from a review article is the paper actually provides a foundation of the topic. It will also provide the current state of knowledge and identify the gaps in existing studies. Pick the ones that are highly cited and are most recent. I would say keep it within two to three years if possible. Which one do you use? You can use Google Scholar or PubMed. I personally prefer Google Scholar because it is easier to track the number of citations and it also has features of related articles. When you read the articles, be very intentional about the goal. What you want to do is to tease out the knowledge gaps, fill in what has been studied before into your mind map. What if everything you are interested in has been studied? Then let's go to the next step, deep dive of the literature review. Now, what you want to do is to look for the nuances of each original research paper. And where do you look for these articles? Look at the reference list in your review article. When you're reading the original research article, what are you looking for? Was the study done in a particular population or setting? What's the sample size? Was it done in a different period? Perhaps the study method was not robust enough. One time saving tip, read the limitation section because this is where the authors would have written the limitation the current gaps, and the future directions. Now that you have found a gap, what next? Step four, transforming your research gap into a research question. A research gap is a general problem area where you need to find a solution. Once you know your gap, you want to make sure you frame it into a question that can be answered using research. Here, you can use the framework PICO, P-I-C-O, or P-E-O. PICO stands for population, intervention, comparator, and outcomes. This framework is used if you are using a trial where you have an intervention. If it is not an interventional study, you can use the PEO framework. P stands for population, E stands for exposure, and O stands for outcome. Framing your research question in this framework will help you become more focused and to keep your research more contained. If you do not put any constraints in your project, your project will never be completed. I know conducting research is an overwhelming process, so I made the idea to paper blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven step process from idea generation to paper submission. Be sure to get a copy at the link below. Step five, does the research question pass the so what test? Sometimes we get too excited starting a new project without thinking through it. 
Then when the results come out, you don't know what to do with the results. Also, if the research question is not meaningful to the people in your field, there is a high chance your paper might get rejected. The lack of information is usually not a good enough reason to do research. You need to ask, so what? What can people do with that information? Come up with two to three answers and talk it through with your mentors, your collaborators to bounce off some ideas with them. Once you're happy with your research question, then we can proceed to think about the research project. A research question is only the start. There is actually one more planning step you need to do before you dive into your research project. In the next video, I will tell you more about this important step so that all of your effort in this research project does not go to waste. I'll see you there.